A 45-year-old man with a history of peripheral arterial disease presents to our hospital with worsening abdominal pain over the past 24 hours. He has a history of a previous celiac artery stent as well as a history of small bowel ischemia for which he underwent small bowel resection many years ago. On physical exam, his abdomen is diffusely tender to palpation with guarding. His labs are remarkable for an elevated lactic acid to 5.5. CTA reveals a severe stenosis at the origin of the celiac artery, as well as occlusion of the superior mesenteric artery. Therefore, a decision was made to proceed with an exploratory laparotomy to evaluate his bowel, as well as a mesenteric and hepatic artery bypass. The patient was brought to the operating room and placed a pine on the table. General endotracheal anesthesia was induced and a midline laparotomy was performed through the previous incision. Dissection was carried down past the subcutaneous tissue to the linea alba. The linea alba was incised and the peritoneal cavity was entered in the superior aspect of the incision where we were less likely to injure any adherent bowel. Once the peritoneal cavity is entered, the incision is extended inferiorly. This is done slowly and with extreme caution because there are extensive small bowel adhesions to the anterior abdominal wall. Once the entire abdominal incision is opened, we continue to take down adhesions from the abdominal wall until the entire abdomen is freed and we can freely mobilize the small bowel. The falciform ligament is ligated to avoid tears to the liver as shown here. We can then begin the exposure of the superior mesenteric artery. The transverse colon and greater omentum are lifted superiorly out of the patient's body. The small bowel is retracted inferiorly and the superior mesenteric artery is palpated at the root of the mesentery. Dissection is then begun at the root of the mesentery to expose the superior mesenteric artery. On our dissection, the middle colic artery is encountered first and we follow this artery down to find the superior mesenteric artery. Control of the mesenteric artery and all of its branches, including the right colic and jejunal branches, is obtained using vessel loops as shown here. The vessel loops are clipped and tucked away as we proceed to expose the infrarenal aorta. For this, the retractors are repositioned to retract the small bowel to the patient's right, which is brought underneath the right abdominal wall. The transverse colon remains retracted superiorly and out of the way. We feel the aortic pulse and incise the posterior parietal peritoneum to enter the retroperitoneum and expose the aorta. Control of the distal aorta just above the aortic bifurcation is obtained using an umbilical tape. The peritoneal incision is extended to expose the proximal infrarenal aorta. In the same fashion, control is obtained with an umbilical tape. The IMA is dissected free and control of this is obtained using a vessel loop. With the exposure of the aorta complete, we now turn our attention to the hepatic artery. The stomach is retracted inferiorly. The lesser omentum is incised to enter the lesser sac. Dissection is carried down near the superior border of the pancreas until the common hepatic artery is identified. The common hepatic artery, proper hepatic artery, and GDA are exposed and controlled with vessel loops. Now that all vessels are identified and exposed, we can begin our bypass. The patient is fully heparinized, and once a proper ACT is reached, the infrarenal aorta is clamped proximally and distally using padded Fogarty clamps. These clamps help prevent damage to the vessel wall in the setting of calcifications. An aortotomy is created with an 11 blade and extended with scissors. A small chunk of the calcified aorta is cut out to prevent our aortotomy from collapsing on itself. A bifurcated graft is then sewn to the aorta in an antiside fashion using running 3-0 proline suture.
Note that our graft is beveled so that the graft is angled inferiorly. This angling is done purposefully to create a lazy C-loop bypass to our SMA and hepatic artery, preventing kinking. The anastomosis is completed, the aorta is flushed proximally and distally, and the clamps are released. We then return to our superior mesenteric artery exposure. A limb of that graft is brought over in that lazy C-loop configuration. It is noted to sit well without any kinks. The superior mesenteric artery is clamped proximally and distally, and the vessel loops are pulled under tension to prevent back bleeding. An SMA arteriotomy is created with an 11 blade and extended with pot scissors. The graft is marked and fashioned to appropriate length as shown here. We then create an end to side anastomosis between the graft and the superior mesenteric artery with 6-0 proline suture in a running fashion. After the anastomosis is complete, all the branches are back bled and flushed, and the SMA clamps are released. We perform an intraoperative Doppler evaluation to ensure that the flow within our bypass and our SMA is appropriate. Next, the hepatic artery is re-exposed. The stomach is elevated and using a combination of blunt finger dissection and bovi electrocautery, we create a tunnel posterior to the stomach but anterior to the pancreas. The transverse colon is then elevated and the tunnel is carried through the mesocolon. Caution must be taken here not to injure any of the vessels within the mesocolon. The second limb of the bifurcated graft is brought through this tunnel. We cut the graft to length and bevel it appropriately. The common hepatic artery is clamped proximally and distally. An end to side anastomosis between the graft and the common hepatic artery is performed using 6 0 proline suture in a running fashion. The clamps are then released after the anastomosis is performed, and again, using Doppler intraoperatively, we check our graft and we check our hepatic artery. We check the lay of our graft to ensure that there are no kinks and that our proximal anastomosis is hemostatic. A piece of greater omentum is mobilized to perform an omental flap and cover our proximal anastomosis. With this omental flap, we hope to prevent the future development of aortoenteric fistulas at our proximal anastomosis. Because this patient had a redo abdomen and multiple abdominal wall hernias were encountered when the abdomen was entered, we employed the help of our general surgery colleagues to perform a complex abdominal wall closure.